summer it's in Switzerland in the beautiful Engadine Valley. We're high in the Swiss Alps, 1750 meters above sea level on a picture postcard. Perfect day. And as they have done for more than a century, today our athletes race down the mountain from Samaritz to the nearby hamlet of Cellarina. It's women's monobob World Series action as we head into our second heat. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the action. And John, it was a little bit of a lottery in the first heat. Yeah, some, you know, familiar names. Uh, Martina, you know, Fontanova, Swiss. She had won a silver medal in one of the previous races this year. Didn't have a very good start, but great speed at the bottom. She's in a bronze medal position. Laura Nolta, well, this German athlete's won three of the women's doubles events, two-person events, and a little rocky at the top of the track. She had a good start. She rocketed down, and uh, she was actually something you thought was normal in the competition with her position. And, well, the person leading, Kaylee Humphreys, uh, this is really normal to see her atop of the leaderboard. Uh, you know, the two-time Olympic gold medalist. Uh, she made it look pretty easy. She's the leader, Martin. But behind these three, there was a lot of strange sleds coming down the track. Not a lot of sleds came down this track straight. And it's going to be a pretty close race. A lot of Myers right there for a chance for a medal, too. Yeah, it could be very entertaining. It was a little bit of a lottery. For a lot of these women, it's the first time ever in this sled in a race. Kaylee Humphreys, uh, Laura Nolta has had a couple, but Kaylee and uh, and Alana Myers-Taylor have not driven the sleds before. Had a little message from Christine De Brown between the runs, and she was saying, uh, looking forward to the second heat, this is a slippy, slidery lottery in these very strange sleds. And uh, there's a, a bunch of athletes watching in Pyeongchang in Korea at the moment. So hey to Heath Spence, to Jackie Narakot, and a bunch of others who are watching with interest. And these sleds, they weigh quite a lot less than a similarly sized two-seater uh, two-man sled that you use in two-man and women's bobsleigh, but they run the same runners. So runner choice is going to be interesting. The sleds are all identical, but of course the athletes put their own little mark into them. So let's wait and see what happens. Uh, our medalists from... Uh, Innsbruck, though, have struggled a little bit here. Brianna Walker, she was the gold medalist ahead of Lara Nolta. Nolta's second here. Bree Walker in fourth place after our first heat. And uh, the bronze medalist, Katrin Bile, is last. So she will go off first, followed by Christine de Bruyne. Mariam Yamanka finished in, what, eighth or ninth place in Innsbruck, and she's kind of that position here again. But for first time as Alana Myers-Taylor and Kaylee Humphreys, again, like Stephanie Schneider, just to reiterate, they didn't drive the sled until training this week. They are in with a shout at the medals. Ready to get the second and deciding heat of the Women's Monobob World Series race underway here in Samaritz, Switzerland. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the action with you. Katty Bile, bronze medalist in the field in Innsbruck about uh, a month ago before Christmas. She was in our 16th place after the first of the two heats. She had massive skids all the way down this first straight, John, but that looks a lot better. Martin, we saw that on a number of sleds, and if you would have told me that this athlete who had won bronze medals in the two previous events, including she won the uh, bronze medal in the European Championships in the two-person sled competition last weekend in Winterberg, you're telling me she's last? You know, that tells you there's a, there's a lot of learning curve in this woman's mount of Bob, and uh, I find it very entertaining, Martin. It sure is, and it's a real learning curve for these athletes. The sled is the same size, it goes on the same runners as their regular sleds, but it weighs at least 100 kilos less, and all of that is making them move around a lot more than these athletes are used to. If they use the same lines they do in their regular sled, it won't hold the line in the corner, so everything they do has to be slightly different. Katy Bar with a better looking run here. Her first run was a 1.13.36. There you go, nearly two seconds quicker. That's what she wanted in the first heat. 1.11.60 would have left her in fourth place. Yeah, that's where you expect this. Very talented, eyes and hands driver. Uh, 
She doesn't get great starts in the two women's competitions, but she's a great driver. We know that. And, uh, you know, we'll see her tomorrow. Look at her. She's, she's like a little tentative talking about the sled. Uh, but, Martin, we're, you know, we're in uncharted territory. Uh, some of these athletes haven't driven these sleds until this week. And this is a very different version sled than we saw last year that they were using, which were the plank sleds. These sleds seem to have more control, although you wouldn't have thought that with some of the sleds coming down the track. <laughs> and, and we may well see that again in the second heat. Okay, yeah. Perplexion, I think, is as much part of this equation. They have to learn these sleds. One of the key changes is in the two-man world and four-man, they'd be going to fatter and fatter runners. Narrow runners is what you want. You, you know, you're going back a decade in runner choice here. 6.02 gets away, and again for Christina Brown, a slightly better run out of corner one. And if you get too much of that wall in corner one, you're going to be skidding all the way down here to a wall curve. She had more hits than Elvis, as you like to say, in the first <laughs> heat between curve one and wall. And, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a, you know, she's a second back. Tomorrow she won't be a second back. She's going to be right in the hunt. This is one of the better drivers in the field. And this is why we're in uncharted territory one year out of the Olympic Games when these sleds will compete for gold medals. Martin, I, again, I'm intrigued. And, uh, and you know, I know the athletes, some of them are very perplexed about it, but hey, this is it. They, they're they're going to be competing for gold medals next year. Well, here's Christine de Bruyne oh, dropping a little next. behind. Yeah, same speed though, that's good. And at the line, how close will she be? 200 in it. Now that's more, more like a traditional bobsleigh yeah. race with a couple of hundreds in it at the bottom. And you know, they learn fast all the time, John. Every time they go to a new track, they have to learn it really quickly. The progress here is now really going to be accelerated because, well, hopefully, we're heading into the Games, as you say, in just over 13 months. I like to hear their expressions when they get out of the sled. They're all, like, putting their hands up in the air, like, what do you want to tell me? You know, I mean, I have no clue, you know, and... Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not like what they're driving. It's like, okay, you're going to the Masters competition, and they hand you, okay, you got to use these clubs today. What? You know, and, uh, but, you know, Christine well, was 8,800 yeah, better. Know. Yeah. It's, it's like 8,800 better saying, in this run. Like going to the Masters and giving you tennis balls and going, okay, off you go. What do you mean, off you go? Mariam Yamanka, well, she's had one monobob race and she wasn't particularly over inspired by that. However, as you say, as the defending Olympic champion, she wants to go with two chances to win in 13 months. So, boy, you better start doing the homework soon. Yeah, and it's not like, you know, it's another whole event. It's another whole gold medal. Boy, this is much better than she did in the first run, Martin. She was yeah. she was sideways coming down that curve in the first run. And Martin, she's come out and said she doesn't like it. But, you know, well, what an opportunity. You double your chance of winning an Olympic medal. Wow. You know, it's like having, there's a 100-meter event. And all of a sudden, they said, okay, now we're going to have a 200-meter event. Oh, I don't want to run 200 meters. You know, this yeah. is an opportunity well, that they want to go. Boy, it's, <laughs> yeah. Look at this yeah. much better. This is the Olympic champion who uh, was very suspect in the first run, like Catherine Bill and, you know, uh, Christina De Bruyne, of which are all, you know, these three, these first three ladies are all ladies that are favored to win a medal tomorrow. And they were yep. in the back of the pack, the last three places. So Still this a is why skiddy down the it might be a little section. And again, if, if they're coming off the corner on the same line they would use in a two-seater sled, it's going to slide around more. They need to adapt their lines. The corners are the same. The sled has changed. And so, and don't forget, their only training runs on Thursday was in snow almost as deep as it is here in the finish area. I, I'm, and I'm not kidding. It was almost what? literally a couple of inches of snow all the way down the track. So it was nothing like this. One second and 800s better in her second run. So 
You know, again, yeah. they haven't really adapted. The, the Germans got these sleds just before the Innsbruck of, or the Winterberg event. You know, they, they uh, look in, pretty. In Innsbruck, yeah. And, yeah, and uh, this is, a, this is a, you know, Innsbruck, you're 49, 51 seconds. Here, you're a minute 11, minute 12. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's such a different animal here. Well, we go from an one. Olympic who, champion who won the... to yeah. yeah, a European champion last year. She was the winner of the first race in Winterberg. And again, a little struggle in the first heat. She won't have the fastest of the starts. But that's better. This is where she made her error. Yeah, she was sideways all the way. Bang, bang. Ricochet rabbit here, too. You know, and again, the first four athletes down the track are all potential medalists in tomorrow's competition. And they're in the back of the pack. And there's three or four athletes at the front who uh, are not household names in women's bobsled. So that's what makes it interesting. And you kind of want to small nations a chance. Having less experience of a two-seater sled, does that actually help you learn this faster? Are the, are the habits less ingrained? Well, I guess not, because Kaylee Humphreys is fastest of all, and she probably has more races in a two-man and a four-man than anybody in the field. So I guess it's all down to how you learn. 300's back. Best speed, though, for Segeva. See if she can keep it straight down here out of Gunter Sachs in the speed part of the trap. Of the course, and I don't think it is. Martin, you know, she's got the best speed. Oh, she's 500, 111, 82. That she's, was uh, close wow, across the line. Yeah. 80, 8,700, so 69 and, yeah, 8,700 is better than the first run. They're all going way faster. But, of course, these <laughs> four sleds in the back of the pack had runs they want to forget in the first run. Yeah. This is the snake. Everybody having problems in there, even in the two-man bobsled this morning. This is Nash and Dixon. Not too bad, but she goes into the belly of Dixon and she has to steer too hard there. Then this is down on the bridge and tree, way down to the bottom part of the track where you're really flying. And again, they're making it up as they go along because there is no defined... Uh, the coaches don't know. The coaches have never driven these things. So the athletes are making up the lines on each run as they learn. It's a, it's a real survival of the fittest. Well, Andrea Greco of Romania, again, she's figured well. She's done a number of monobob races. She's third in the standings at the moment with a fourth in Winterberg, six in Innsbruck. But what she, can she do here? 4,500s ahead of Mariama Yamanka from Heat 1. Is that too big a She had the third be? best start in the first heat. Martin, she's one of the bigger girls in the competition. It's a maximum weight like it is in the 2 and the 4. Ooh, that's a mistake. And, uh, but uh, she's one of the bigger girls. And so she's pushing a lighter sled. So she had the top three. And she's done well in the competition before. Martin, she... How old is she, 22 now? Uh, younger, she knows she's 26 been, now, yeah. 26 now, but she's been around for yeah. four or five years as a brakeman and just started driving. And, ooh, watch out in the horseshoe, coming in with that tap. Her former brake woman, Teodora Vlad, is now driving monobob and two-seater sleds for Romania as well. So they've done exactly with Teodora what they did with Andrea when she was pushing Maria Constantin, took her out of the back seat, got her trained up to drive. And now 4,500s lead at the, at the horseshoe, 2,400s at that clock. It's, you know, the speed's fifth best speed. I don't know, Mark. Tap there. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. It is close. 112 18, and Mariama Yamanka picks off another one. The time for Andrea Greco. Well, Mariama standing in the leader's box, watching herself rise gradually up the leader's box. I wonder if she's liking it any more than she did after the first heat. Andrea Greco oh, in second place with 11 minutes to, to go. go. Yeah, aren't there, though? You know, she's one of the tallest. She's the tallest athlete, I think, here in the, in the race. And she hits before horseshoe, and that causes some pain. Look how low she is. Ooh. Watch the runner tips here. See how much she has to steer. To, oh, yeah. something comes off the sled there. Look at the runner tips. Yeah. She really had to steer hard because she got in there late. 
You steer hard like that. She had a 4,500s lead right there. And ended up losing by 400. She lost a half second on the bottom. Mariama Yamanka leads as we get to Anne Van Yuen, House of Belgium. Drove the sled only on Thursday for the first time. Sarah Ertz, her great woman for tomorrow's race, yelling her off at the top. And Anne, probably the lightest athlete in this field, pushing a sled that's nearly 175 kilos. Yeah, she had the worst start, 16th best start in the first run, but she gets the, doesn't get great starts in the two-person bob either, but Martin, we know she's a good driver and she had great speeds in the bottom part of the track. So she could drive herself into position to be the leader here. She's only got 1,200. She's probably going to lose a little bit more time. Then she gets the opportunity at Horseshoe to vault herself down to the bottom with the slingshot effect and get some good speed real high there. 400s. Check the speed at only the six best speed. So she had a much better drive in the first run than this. Yeah, I think she was rescuing it in Horseshoe. She got tapped away onto the left-hand side going in, and I think that sent her up to the roof, so she probably had to steer rather more than she wanted. And at the moment, she's going to drop two or three spots. So Mariami Amanka moves on up, Andrea Greco moves on up, and she's down to fourth. And Najesta uh, Sergeva in third place ahead of Anne Van Yuenhausen. And you saw Yamanka there shaking her head. I think she's having trouble working out exactly what people are doing right as much as what they're doing wrong. We see the after effects, but we don't see how it's all happening. It is a bit of a black Nobody art at the moment. Nobody gets through that finish these. curve. Yeah, and this is a mistake here that going into a horseshoe and a skid, which means you have she gets up high, loses a little bit of the velocity now because you want to launch yourself late. this is the pivotal part of the track yeah so now look at the runner tips when we see him she's probably going to she's probably doing a robin hood right there to get her off the curve and when you do that martin the back end skid she hits a little bit in the take on before telephone we know she's a better driver than that well, Mariami Manka is our leader with 10 sleds to go ahead of angio greco and Najesda sergeva It is definitely, at the moment, an imprecise skill, isn't it? <laughs> Your man is going, well, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> they're looking at replays and, like, uh, I have no clue. Yeah. You know, they're, you're just saying, it, this is so new to me. Well, here's the inside Pretty of the sled. The same. There's a little, little covering there where normally the brake woman would sit so they can run through, jump over that little seat back and then jump in. Those are the D-rings, they're held by the bungee straps, and that's occasionally what the athlete gets their foot caught on or past the steering mechanism, trying to put their feet around the mechanism up against little foot braces. Yeah, they're talking about out of corners at corner one. And, and again, I'm thinking, because the sled's so light, if you get a little run up corner one, then suddenly the thing is skidding all over the place and you don't move because you're gonna make it worse. And there is the brake. So it's a long way further forward than on a two-man sled because the driver has to pull it rather than the brakeman who would be sitting at the back. It's normally right around the rear axle area. So carbonate, uh, polycarbonate, uh, polycarbonate, uh, composite cowl, split cowl with uh, articulation and axles very similar to a normal two-man sled. I think you're allowed to take your mask off to have a drink. But uh, there is our race leader, Mariami Amanka. And in a lot of ways, very similar to a two-seater sled. And that's possibly what makes them even harder to drive because they're similar, but not the same. I like it. Intriguing. Yeah. <coughs> it just has a, excuse me, the, uh, you know, it just has the opportunity to provide lesser nations the opportunity to enter the sport quickly. You know, and, uh, you know, Jamaica, she had a much better second run. Samaritan Switzerland for the women's 
Monobob World Series second and deciding heat final 10 sleds headed off by Anastasia Makarova of Russia and not too many of the athletes in the field have got big experience of these sleds Makarova in 10th place after the first heat has done done just four Monobob races and only two of them this year in this new Monobob in fact only once with the split cow Uh, she had some issues there in the first run, Martin. She's got some time in the bank here. She needs to be straight. You know, we mentioned it in the first heat, and I'm sure Evil Ferriani, the president of the International Federation, has got a big grin on his face because uh, this is his passion with Mono Bob. And, you know, there was a lot of people that doubted this mono, woman's Mono Bob competition, and just look what's unfolding in front of us, Martin. Uh, women next year will have a chance to win two Olympic medals, much like the men with two men and four men. And plus, this is a different competition. I mean, a single seat, single seat sled. And it really opens the door, Martin, for lesser nations to get involved. You only need one person. And you know, in, in my my time also, that it's tough to get a second person, third person, four persons involved with you. If you're the only person, game on. You know, all you need yeah. is this one person sled, you know, and a coach, and off you go. And plus, there's so much, everybody shares coaches. Look at this first, 112.05, 1500 is better. So, Jamaica's uh, time in the leader's box is done. But, Martin, I just think it, it's just another whole big, wide open avenue for international bobsledding. And uh, what I'm seeing here, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Well, Makarova. Start. Yeah, traditional Brakeman start. Stride. Gets Look in, at her she stride. digs it out. Yeah. And that, again, that's you something know, that about... a lot of drivers are going to have to learn for the first time. Some of the ex-brake women who are driving know those techniques. A lot of the drivers will do a lot of work on that through the summer, getting that rotation and that drive off the line. And it'll be interesting how the IBSF continues to manage the sleds all being exactly the same except for the runners. Yeah. Remember in uh, NASCAR, there was a race called IROC, International Race of Champions, and those sleds and cars, those sleds, those cars and tires were all exactly the same. And they had people from F1 and NASCAR and drag racing. And, you know, and the, the big challenge there was don't give these guys a chance to change those sleds or those cars up. So, you know, the runners are the only thing you can bring to the table here, Martin, which you and I both know we discuss it. That's the last place for black magic in the sport, the no runners. 606 start for Misha McNeil. Apologies, I called her the Youth Olympic Champion from 2012 in the first heat. She was the silver medalist, the only non-Dutch medalist with Jasmine Sawyer. I was reminded of that by gold medalist Sanna Decker, who was on the sled with Mari van Hugenbosch, who was the gold medalist. 3100s up. Best speed for Misha McNeil. And the British slider with three monobob races. Only one in this articulated sled, though. And unlike previous Martin, years, the throw. teams now, they own the sled, so they have tenure of the sled. They're not handed out from a pool any longer as they were up until now. But only the fifth she, best she speed. Get through her and the wall. Yeah. yeah. 111 to 4500s. Yeah, well, she uh, we have 30 hundreds better than her first run. We had a bunch of track records in that the first good, heat. Run. Fastest run in the first heat was half a second quicker than that. So we may yet see more sleds going quicker. Montel Douglas will be breaking her tomorrow. She's holding on to the sled at the bottom there. You know, the slingshot effect. You hit this car, this horseshoe perfectly. You launch yourself out of the bottom part of the track, accelerate speed. You know, you can't gain time going down the track. You can only prevent yourself from losing time. And you've got to hit every opportunity that gravity and the track gives you to increase speed. She's a good driver, Martin. This might be a good sport yep. for her. 22-year-old Swiss Melanie Hassler. Now, she's really coming in at the right age for this, isn't it? Still learning bobsledding, and she's learning this fast as well. She's currently second in our World Series standings with a fifth in Winterberg, a fourth in Innsbruck. 
And that's a nice good start, 591. Former yeah, great she's woman, so she's got best that start. technique. Six best start in the first run, which is decent. And you know, she's a break. She'll be in a break minute tomorrow. No, she's driving tomorrow in the race. Yep. How many of these, almost every one of these athletes are in the race tomorrow, right, Mark? Yep, everybody is, I think. Um, but she's a former break woman as well, so she's got that technique already ingrained into her. This is pretty clean run. Let's see what she has for the, oh, she comes out of there quickly. Three tenths, fourth best speed. We've seen that three tenths go away though, Martin. Yeah. There's no gimmies on this track. 2,500, best speed at the this badge, point. Badge, the Samritz Bob Club right in front of her helmet. So she is an SMBC slider. Good speed this is at the looking bottom. good for Hassler. Can she get through She'll the finish without hitting the wall? Yes. Yes. And that is only four hundredths off the fastest run from the first heat. So that in the first heat would have left her in the silver medal position. Now, she was in a dead heat for seventh with Frenchwoman Margot Bock. So that's a good second run. 68 hundredths better in this run, but the track's getting a little faster. It's warmer, natural ice. You know, the, the, when it's warm like this, it creates a little f better friction, less friction below the runners compared to when it's really cold in the morning. Look at these beautiful pictures out of Horseshoe. Looks like she came out of there abruptly, though, Martin. Into telephone. Nice. She got on the take on perfectly. She's oh, happy. Thumbs up from Melanie. Yeah. And, and she should be. That was a good looking run. Now, what about Margot Box? She was the very first out of the start. So let's see what she's got here. Again, this young French woman, only in her third season of sliding, just 21 years old, three podium finishes in six previous monobob races. But she has only had one in these articulated sleds. That was in Innsbruck, where she finished ninth. But Martin, this is the loaded woman's Bob Field. The, all the other previous races, you didn't have Olympic champion like Kelly Humphreys yeah. or you know or you know or uh, Alana. So this, I think, is a pretty good preview of what we're going to be seeing next year in Beijing. Ooh, boy, she hit hard in the snake, but most sleds do. And don't forget, tied to the 100th with Melanie Hassler at the bottom of the track. Ooh. Margot Bock and Real the low team there, she came profiled, out. Profiled on French TV last week. Really nice feature on them. Only 1600s back. Didn't have a good horseshoe. Came out too low. Smacked the wall before the take on to, to telephone. She's going to drop one, Martin. But she yeah. was in a tie with Hassler. How oh, can she get through her? No, see? Oh, wow. Yeah. I'd yeah, say half the, the sleds don't come there. off there correctly. Yeah, half of the sleds aren't getting off that finish yeah. line, finish corner, Portago well, and, and properly. At, and at the speed they're doing there, John, you know, just shy of 90 miles an hour, they're making the steer maybe a couple of hundreds of a second earlier, and it just brings them down half a meter too soon. Maybe not even that. Yeah, th this is too low here. You know, that's too low, and then she steers hard to come off the curb. And watch her go over and hit the wall on the left. And that's, you know, into telephone. Now she has to go in the middle of telephone and steer more. Watch the right side of your screen. You can see the tap before the take on. But the real mistake was so down there in the finish. Six to go. Stephanie Schneider for Germany. And Schneider, first ever taste of monobob. And again, look at the technique, a former world championship winning great woman. No wonder she knows how to get a sled started. Yeah, she rocked the sled differently than most. Best start, you'd expect it. Martin, she ran a long ways that time too, compared to some of the others. Should almost start counting counting steps. To, yeah, I yeah. remember a couple of the others, like Kaylee Humphreys, was in quickly in the sled. Well, 
It's how you make your speed, and Very that's why good. they often swap around starters between different, different starts. A short start needs a more explosive powerhouse. A longer start needs somebody maybe with better top speed. And I guess Kaylee decides that she's reached maximum velocity and gets in before she's pulling the sled back. Half a second up for Schneider, shooting for the medals maybe from sixth place. Very clean, even up there in the snake, where everybody had problems with the snake. She was great. This is a much better run. They're not that her bad. She had a bad first run, but uh, she's making this, this look like there's somebody quicker. in the back. Can she get she's out? Really? Watch the finish now. Can really she get out? Run. Yes, she. Track record: 110.90. Wow. That's one and a quarter That's second, uh, one and uh, one, one second point one five quicker than anybody's gone. So not only did it look good, it was good. And she made it look like a two seat sled. It, she was more in control 90. of the sled than the other way around. Nine tenths quicker. Look at the only athlete we've seen rocking the sled. So that's going to be a little, well, you know, should I rock the sled like Stephanie Schneider? Well, you know, she has, you know, one of the best starts, the best start so far, top three start in the first run. Here is uh, where she made, you know, her nine tenths better run down there in the tree bridge section, speed part of the tracks, yeah. about 77, 78 miles an hour they're going. So 80 miles an Stephanie hour. Stephanie Schneider going. leads. Stephanie Schneider leads with five to go from Melanie Hassler, Margot Bock. Here is our race winner from Innsbruck and one of the leading lights in Wingerman's Monobob, Australia's Brianna Walker. So there'll be lots of cheering from Pong Kyung Chang right now. Let's see what Bree can do. Oh, Ooh, Bree. Oh, that's no, no. Doesn't have any gloves on, driving with the bare hands. The clear look at her eyes. You know, nice clear visor. Now watch, what can she do here in Snake? Can she get through here without hitting the left hand? Nope. Not too bad though. She's down by a 2800. Needs to stop the bleeding at the next clock. She stays within 30 hundreds. She has a chance. Ooh, ooh, wrong side of horseshoe, and she gets the lip. Uh, in eight previous Monobob races, speed. she's had six wins and a silver medal. But it's not going to be a win and probably not a medal here either. Half a second back. This is the second best run at the moment. Yeah, a couple mistakes, but uh, she's really lit the fire for Australia bobsleigh right down there. Yeah, down okay. under. She's getting a lot of great media, which the sport yeah, needs. And she's another one that hits before the finish line. Yeah, Boy, she's and drops a tenth time. behind Melanie Hassler to third place. So a 1.11.59, that's two tenths better than her first heat. But a lot of them have gone six or seven tenths quicker. Tenths better. Yeah, she started off right at the top with some issues out of curve one. Watch her tap the wrong side. Now she's got to go into horseshoe really late, and she goes up there and touches the roof. That's not... Although some people say you can bounce off there and get a good line. Yeah. I never liked that idea. Uh, you know, too much friction. But, Crashing uh, to get a good line, you know, yeah. Less than ideal. You know, she's not the first person today. Well, so Bree Walker drops to third. Stephanie Schneider leads with four to go as we get to our returning mom, Alana Myers-Taylor. Nick Taylor, her husband, and baby Nico will be watching from close by. And Alana just on the fringes of the medals here. Watch the start. She blew the start away in the first round with a 64, or 574 in the first round. 75, and she got into a little skid, but didn't penalize. She steered around there, but pretty good. Now the first albatross is in the snake coming up. Let's watch her in the crossover coming up right here. How hard is she going to hit the left side? Bang. We saw most of the two-man sleds doing that this morning. 
Oh, she's there. Return that Alana really loves. She says it's such a smooth, relaxing track to race on. Not sure that the monobot is making it more relaxing. Martin, she lost a lot of time on the bottom of the track. Looks like she's going to do it again here. 1400s down to seven. Uh, I don't know for Alana. Didn't have good speed in the first run down here. There's some mistake there too. It's gonna be close, right to the hundredth. Can she get through without hitting the wall in the finish? Huh. Yes, Bob, she loses by eight hundredths. Schneider moves yeah. up one. Alana half a second quicker, but Schneider nine tenths quicker, so that wipes out quicker. that first heat advantage for Alana Myers-Taylor. But as with all of these Schneider's athletes, putting this her... is... Schneider putting herself in position for a medal. This is Nash and Dixon. A little drift there, but I think she too low here, Martin. That's a, you know too low. I think she has to steer too. It looks like she's getting in there a little late too. And the the optimum line's a little higher line than that. And then this, that was worth eight hundreds right there, Martin. Yeah. Right, Alana will be racing no worse tomorrow than top as well. Five, though. Three to go, and we have Switzerland, Germany, and the USA to come. This is Martina Fontenev, Germany's Stephanie Schneider, the leader. Fontenev with a silver medal in Winterberg. Didn't race in Innsbruck, otherwise she would very likely be our points leader. 5.98 getaway. She finds another 100th at the start. Yeah, she's right there. She's 1,900s down to Schneider at the start. So she can't make a mistake. You know, she's going to bleed more time. She's going to need a, a, a really good snake here. Well, that's pretty much the norm. Only 300s back. That's a good sign for uh, Martina to only be 300s back with the start deficiency there. She's going to need a really good medium high line. She's got that. Now look for the speed. Only 100. She's coming back. There's the best speed. This is what she did in the first run. Won a silver medal in Winterberg. 200's back, Martin. Going to be close. This could be on the toss of a coin. Schneider is very clean. Fontenay is very clean. She's got the best speed of all. She's clean. She avoids hitting the wall here. Yeah. Uh, six hundred. Six hundred. She's got in it. a medal. So this she guarantees herself a medal. Exact same downtime as we just saw for Alana Myers-Taylor. She had just enough in the back though, Martina Fontenev, to stay in front and takes a medal on home ice in Samritz. And that might be the first time in her career she's been able to do that. Martin, she got beat by 1900s at the start. For her to outdrive Schneider to the bottom, this shows you that uh, it's not all start. You know, it's the start is the big component, but she drove herself into this bronze medal position. She had to. And, and there was the ice pictures. to do so Tell you in, how she in feels Innsbruck. Like. In Innsbruck, you would never have caught her. Can't do you? it. <laughs> you would ne no. Yeah. Here, no. there's room. Now, what about this? Youth Olympic champion, Lara Nolta, Jog champion 2016. That was in a monobob sled, but it was in a plank sled. Again, one of our leading lights in this year's World Cup. And she was in the silver medal position after the first up, 5.89. Martin, look at the way she leans to the left side, looking over the... Uh, so this isn't like the sled she's used to. Look how low she's sitting, I mean, she has to look out to the left like, side. She's a Florida grandmother looking around the steering wheel, isn't she, of her Cadillac? Yeah, that's a good one. 2400s. She's won three times in the Women's World Cup circuit and would be leading the World Cup if she didn't have that DNF crash at the opening event in Segulda. Yeah, 1700 position Ooh. as well. Ooh, here we go. Yeah, 1700s. Speed, we didn't see the speed there, it didn't pop up. But uh, now again, she was smooth at She's the bottom, bleeding. though. Can't afford to lose any more time run. or any more speed down the straight. She's got Let's to be keep her eyes straight. 
could be 100. Martina Fontenev could still hold the lead. Nolte Fontenev, who's got it? Nolte by 900. She was 200 slower on that run than Martina Fontenev. She had 1100 in the bank. Big thumbs up from Gert Leopold, the trainer. And Lara Nolte guarantees herself at least a silver medal here in Samaritz. Do you know what? She just loves life. I think that's all part of this. It's a new challenge, and she's embracing it with everything she's got. This is Nash Dixon, and, you know, she gets through there without too much of a penalty. Down here, Sled was trying to get away from her down on the speed part of the track, bridge and tree. Well, if you've won as many medals as she has this year, you'd be like that too, Martin. <laughs> yeah, I probably would, wouldn't I? Permanent high. Well, what about Kaylee Humphreys then? Double Olympic champion, multiple world champion. She's won in two and four-seater sleds with all female and with male crews. What is she going to do when it is just Kaylee versus the mountain? First heat lead. 13 hundredths of a second, that's nothing. And she's got 11 hundredths in the bank now. And she's got to be clean. Nolta just posted the time. She got herself into the clubhouse as the leader. And she looks on, and Kelly Humphreys has got this gold medal in her hands. And she's had a few other gold medals in her hands before and delivered. Ooh, hard hit there and snake. Down to four. It's all going to be about the fast four corners and the run to the finish, isn't it? Where the speed is built in the forest will tell us. Pretty decent line in Horseshoe. Ten. Yeah, here comes Kaylee Humphreys now. She's got the eyes and hands and the gold medals, the uh, Olympic gold medals, World Cup title holder, the present the defending world champion from 2020. And Kaylee Humphreys uh, is clean, speed part of the track. Martin, we got to watch out for this straightaway. And now she comes out of this finish curve. Because there's still one more out there for Kelly Humphreys. It's I not the guy's victory one, by two tenths of a second. 1.11.09 is enough. Fastest run in the end came from Stephanie Schneider. 1.10.9. Schneider gets fourth place and a track record but Kaylee Humphreys well she's had up. one world championships as a US slider she's the champion and she's had one monobob race and she has won that as well <laughs> they've got no breath to talk have they this is nearly 1800 meters above sea level you get out of breath walking up the stairs and running at the start pushing the sled on your own as Alana goes off to offer her hey, congratulations, Lara Nolte does likewise. Hey, we're going to see all these same cast of characters tomorrow, back in the what they're really used to. And Martin, I wouldn't be surprised. Kaylee Humphreys won on this track many times in a different vehicle, but she shows that it's about eyes and hands. And she's got them, and she delivered again. Boy. Doing commentary on my first event, Martin. This is, this is, I think, not what everybody anticipated, but uh, I really like what we just saw. It's pretty impressive. Well, Kaylee, Kaylee doesn't know the sled. She's only driven it a couple of times down this track before today, but what she does have is huge experience. She didn't panic or overreact, and she had a two-tenths margin of victory over Lara Nolta. And if that podium remains the same tomorrow, Martina Fontenev will be very happy. She gets her first World Cup medal, or World Series medal, in her home track in Samaritz. And inside the top 10, Misha McNeil and Anastasia Makarova ahead of her Olympic champion, Mariama Yamanka. What I like about that leaderboard, seven different countries in the top 10, Martin. I think it's going to continue to provide an opportunity for the small nations to get involved, but to have the female athletes have a chance to win two Olympic medals next year. Boy, I really, really think this woman's monobob is going to mature right in front of our eyes, Martin. Yep, no question at all. We're early days in the World Series, but Fantastic performance by Kaylee Humphreys.
Talent will out. Lara Nolter, second place, as you say. She is the leading light in this year's Women's World Cup for bobsled. And Martina Fontenev completing the podium with a bronze medal run ahead of Stephanie Schneider, Alana Myers, Taylor and Melanie Hassler. So that's a mix of hugely experienced and really new sliders there with Melanie Hassler and Lara Nolter both in the top six ahead of Brie Walker, Margot Bock of France, Misha McNeil and Anastasia Makarova. So the coaches, I think, are going to have as much to learn as, as the drivers. The drivers will busk it, but the coaches are trying to figure out how do I tell you what's best? I've never driven one. I don't know. Well, that's it for the Monobob World Series. That's it for Saturday's race action. The piece is still open, so if you're in Samaritz watching, switch off and go and enjoy yourself. For everyone else, join John Morgan, me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew as our women's bobsleigh slug coverage continues on Sunday morning. 0900 Central European, 0800 GMT. That's 0300 Eastern. We'll see you then. Bye for now.